What's up folks, Coach Mateo here from Our Strength, and today we're celebrating 20,000 subscribers to the channel. Seriously, thank you all so much for being here. And I wanted to do a big massive Q&A to answer a bunch of questions that people who follow might have. So thank you to everyone who submitted questions and upvoted the most popular ones. Stick around, you'll probably learn something from everything that has been asked. Okay, I'm gonna start with the most popular question that like seven different people asked, which is how tall are you? How tall are you? But I actually interestingly opened up one of the threads Mitchy got movesy 7635 asks, how tall are you? Notorious MMA Connor responds, he's probably 5'9, 5'10. Slept King 994 responds, first thing I wanted to know as well. I think people want to know your height because based on your weight and your height, they can kind of compare your pictures to themselves and be like, okay, is he, you know, 10 pounds heavier than me, but maybe he's a little taller or something like that. I get it. Xander Michaels. 8336 says he's second door hinge tall, which is highly observant. We can see the picture there that my head is close to the second hinge. Or maybe I have giant doors in my house. Wouldn't that be a twist? And then we've got Uvir who says, I don't think so. With a 5'9 frame and these muscles, he ought to weigh 175 to 180 at least, which, which is weird because I don't know why I would lie about my weight. And if I were to lie about my weight, don't we think that I would make myself heavier? and be more jacked than be like, yeah, bro, I'm 155 here. It's not really something to brag about. Ya boy Joes, you underestimate how lean he is to get that small of a waist and that muscularity. Uh, you either have to be really low body fat percentage or have crazy muscularity. Ya boy Joes is informed. To answer the question, I'm 175 centimeters tall, which I think is like 5'9 or maybe 5'8. And yeah, I am really 155 in that photo. Uh, I was 205 in the photo beside it and I didn't change in height. It's in the same bathroom, and I'm currently 170 pounds. We're bulking, we're on the way up. <laughs> Moving on, Kaduri Mdu 43 I'm gonna butcher these names, asks, how do you judge how many calories you eat? Me personally, I just let Macrofactor make all the decisions for me, which is my preferred nutrition tracking app. I've been using it for like a thousand days. You can try it out for free, code MARA, M-A-R-R-A, -R -R -A, for an extended two week free trial. I buy the annual subscription, it works out to like $6 US per month, and it just automatically adjusts my calorie targets based on my weight progress and how much food I'm eating. It's got kind of like a smart algorithm inside of it. I basically just leave all my decisions up to Macrofactor. But if you weren't really sure where to start and you didn't want to use Macrofactor, you could grab a free nutrition tracking app like MyFitnessPal or Chronometer, or you could even grab my free weight loss calculator using the link in the description box and that'll spit out an answer for you. Karen with a four and a three, that's pretty awesome. Asks, I want to lift more and get stronger but also lose fat. Feels like I can get lean and weak or fat and strong. How can I get both stronger and leaner at the same time? Is this a bad goal or strategy? I like getting leaner, but then I get demotivated when my squat, bench press, and deadlift go down. <laughs> I'm actually picturing like a real life Karen, can I speak to the manager type woman here? So hopefully that's you. The reality of it is your top end strength, meaning your 1RM or peak strength on squat, bench press, and deadlift, are probably going to reduce as your body weight decreases. You get worse leverages, especially in the middle of the dieting process when fuel is just lower. You just aren't gonna be able to hit the same numbers as you could when you're full of glycogen, you know, you're eating plenty of carbs, lots of fluid. So one thing to consider is probably some losses in strength on the peak end of things is to be expected with squat, bench press, and deadlift, but it's a good goal probably to try and at least maintain some rep strength, like what you can do for a five rep max, six rep, 10 rep max, those things probably won't move as much, but they will still be affected if we're talking about big significant weight loss, like 10% of your weight loss or more. There's a reason why weight classes exist in powerlifting. And yeah, so um, you can definitely get a little bit stronger for sure. You can definitely get leaner at the same time. But I think the closer you are to being a really advanced trainee on the strength side of things, uh, the harder that's going to be. And also the leaner you get, the harder that's going to be. Like if you're 25% body fat and you're trying to get to 20% body fat, and you might not lose almost any strength when making that happen, but if you're trying to go from 10% body fat to 5% body fat, my friend, it is not gonna be a good time for you. Mr. Priceless Full asks, how long it took you to reach this level? Well, I started lifting weights when I was 19 or 20. I did a bunch of dumb stuff. I had some periods of inconsistency, and I had some periods where I was just purely focused on outdoor activities, climbing, mountain biking, backcountry skiing, and all that stuff. So I guess eight years, but with 
a lot of interruptions and also three just flat out or four flat out years of purely focused on powerlifting style training, which didn't really do all that much for my physique. And I just kind of got fat in there. So I think I could do it a lot faster now if I were to start over at 20. But yeah, basically eight years. I think maybe before that I was doing some push-ups and stuff like that. But I will say recently my muscle growth progress has been the fastest it's basically ever been. I've learned a ton about training for muscle growth. I've been bulking for the last six months, almost seven months now. And you guys will see, I'm going to release a bulking update video where you'll see my physique progress over the last six or seven months. I've gotten so much thicker. I've gotten a lot stronger. And yeah, things are really moving in the right direction. Sman7099 asks, what do you do to manage cravings? What do you snack on? Actually, I'm not a big fan of snacking when I have a lot of cravings and I'm hungry during a diet. I find that snacking just reduces the calories I can actually eat when I sit down to eat proper meals. And I'd rather just like put more of that good filling stuff on my plate instead of breaking it up into a bunch of little snacks. Other than that, I just make sure that my calorie deficit isn't too extreme. I do plenty of activity and exercise to make it so I don't have to drop my calories super low when I'm dieting. And I choose mostly whole minimally processed foods most of the time. Things like apples, potatoes, lean meats, low fat dairy products like Greek yogurt. Those things tend to keep you really full compared to like, you know, if you're just taking a bath in mayonnaise and just shoveling Snickers bars down your throat and just IV dripping Mountain Dew every day. Yeah, okay. Jay, my girlfriend just reminded me behind the camera. She's like, look, when you were super hungry, you chewed a lot of chewing gum. You had a lot of diet soda. Those things were 100% true. They help a lot. I find they just kind of stave off cravings and keep your mouth busy. The other thing is I ate so much frozen green bean that I don't even know if I can look at green beans for the rest of the year. Like literally, I probably was eating 900 grams of green beans a day. No, maybe more. I would eat two of the 700. I was eating 1,500 grams of frozen green beans a day. Four meals a day, and I would eat half a bag of the 750 gram bag. So what is that? Three pounds of green beans a day. It was it was disordered eating. Let's just call it what it is, folks. So eating lots of fruit and veggies and keeping your mouth busy with zero calorie stuff helps a ton. Windblows5021 asks, what do you do if you live a sedentary life and you're aiming for a stable weight year round? I did everything from eating habits, sleep habits, daily exercise four to five times a day just to keep my weight in the 68 to 70 kilo range. And of course, 10,000 steps a day. If I didn't do all that, my body fat percentage would just go to the roof in just two to three weeks. My height is around 165 centimeters. Really quick question. I don't think you're living a sedentary life if you do 10,000 steps a day, that's very active. I am a little bit curious about the four to five times a day of exercise thing. Is that like doing a couple push-ups and squats throughout the day? I would be, you know, maybe you meant four or five times a week. I mean, you're maintaining your weight by being active and making smart choices with your food and lifestyle. That's kind of what it takes. I wish there was a magic pill outside of this that's not, you know, freaking GLP-1 agonists or something like that. But that's basically what it takes, man. The other thing to consider is maybe putting some weight training in there. I'm not sure if that falls under your daily exercise stuff. That can help a lot with just holding more muscle. So maybe 68 to 70 kilos doesn't feel like, you know, such a, a weight that's terrible for you. If you just enjoy being there, then this would be okay. It sounds like a pretty manageable thing to me. Overall, I, I think you're on the right track. Nilesh Bera 7250 asks, transformation of how many days and what was your diet? How to reduce muscle loss during this period? I can't remember for sure. I'm going to ask Jay, my girlfriend, how long was that? Was that like January to, it was basically a year, right? Okay, January to May, I did a fat loss diet. So that's what, like five months of fat loss dieting. And then I did a three month bulk where I gained a little bit too much weight, like 12, 15 pounds or something like that. And then I dieted again until January. We went to Australia and had a couple weeks off and a little bit of fun food. And then I dieted again for like another two months. So some fat loss, some maintenance periods in there. And what was my diet? I ate a high protein diet with meat, dairy, fruit, veggies, basic stuff, nothing fancy. And reducing muscle loss was done by sleeping plenty, managing my stress, eating a high protein diet, and training hard for muscle growth in the gym. I definitely do think that I lost some muscle, especially towards the end of the diet when I was getting really lean and starting to push pretty hard. But uh, I think we did a pretty good job at attenuating most of those losses. and especially early on in the diet, I think I was even building quite a bit of muscle because I just changed my training to more hypertrophy style training. And that was making a lot of difference. Rogue Biker 98 asks, how should an obese sedentary individual weighing 100 kg at 35% body fat, 175 centimeter height, approach getting down to 15% body fat and getting muscular? Recomp versus cut? What's the time frame and protein calorie goal? Also, are you familiar with Lyle's 
Lyle McDonald's rapid fat loss and protein sparing modified fast approach. Okay, let's start with Lyle McDonald's rapid fat loss, protein sparing modified fast. I tried this back in the day when I was trying to get super lean. I ate 800 calories a day, basically exclusively from egg whites, tuna, and chicken. And I think I had like a little bit of veggie in there too. And yeah, it's terrible. It's tragic. Uh, that's disordered eating in my opinion. Um, I don't think almost anybody is really a great candidate for this. Maybe like there's some medical applications where someone might be recommended this, but I think in almost every scenario, it's better to just go with a more moderate fat loss approach. You'll lose a lot less muscle. You won't be as miserable. You won't get lightheaded and pass out. It's really just terrible. And, and honestly, it's not necessary. Might you go a little bit faster? Yeah. But we're talking about the difference between, let's imagine 800 calories versus 1,800 calories. You may lose another two pounds that week. How much of that is muscle? I don't know. Um, but man, just diet for another week. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you might move a little faster, but shit, man, you didn't get into this 35% body fat position in a week or two weeks, and it's not going to take you a week or two weeks to get out of it. So just buckle down and, and start moving in the right direction at a reasonable rate. No need to do anything crazy like that. What's the time frame and protein calorie goal? I would honestly say just use my free weight loss calculator linked in the description box. There's a little basically tab in that sheet that'll show you what your kind of timeline might look like over the next six months, how to take some breaks along the way, and what weight goal milestones you should aim to hit over the next six months. It'll also tell you the protein and calorie goal, but again, nothing crazy, just standard 500, 750, maybe 1,000 calorie per day deficit if you really think you can handle that done for you know 12 weeks at a time or something like that. Recon versus cut, I would say definitely cut if you are 35% body fat, aiming to maintain your weight at 100 kilos and just train. There's just no way you're gonna be 15% body fat at 100 kilos uh, unless you're like top natural bodybuilder in the world. I, I just, I don't see it really happening at 5'9". It's pretty unlikely. So I would do a fat loss diet or fat loss diet and then take a little break, eat at maintenance and, and diet some more. How should you approach getting down there and getting muscular? I think honestly, just getting into some basic weight training stuff, learning to build muscle in the gym, just start training three, four days a week consistently in the gym, start mastering the skills of training for muscle growth in the gym, and just start moving in the right direction with that. That's gonna be your biggest lever for the muscle growth side of things. And we already talked about the fat loss diet side of things. Just start now, buckle in, don't expect to see super crazy results right away in one week. It, it might take you a year to get down to your goal weight. It might take you two years. Um, whatever it takes, let's just not delay it by waiting to get started or giving up early. Shameless plug 91 asks, are you taking on coaching clients? The answer is, yeah, I'm going to take on a few more one-on-one -on -one coaching clients in October, and I'll probably end up taking on one or two new coaching clients each month thereafter. You can just email success at marastrength.com. Let me know a little bit about you, your goals and what you're struggling most with. And if it sounds like I can help you, I'll get you all the details on how coaching works. Anubavyas7781 asks, if you were a vegan, do you think you could have achieved the same results without a ton of protein powder? Most folks don't know that I ate an entirely plant-based diet for over a year. I think it was closer to like a year and a half because I saw a video once upon a time of Clarence Kennedy uh, lifting and I was like, damn, this dude's jacked and he's a vegan. I'm gonna eat exactly what he eats. So sure enough, I downloaded a chronometer. I started eating the shredded wheats with soy milk and flax seeds for breakfast. And yeah, protein powder and some of these other, you know, soy and tofu products. And I actually didn't make very good progress building muscle. Do I think it's because of the vegan diet? Not really, actually. I think it's because that I just wasn't very good at training at the time. I didn't know how to train hard. I didn't know how to train for muscle growth. And a lot of what I was doing just wasn't very specific to that. I think you can make great progress and build a lot of muscle as a vegan, most certainly. And doing it without protein powder is gonna be hard for sure, but not impossible. You're just gonna to have to eat a ton of tofu, a lot of you know seitan and these fake meat products. You're gonna to have to have a lot of soy products probably. The tough thing with being vegan and especially fat loss diets when you're talking about high protein is that a lot of plant-based protein sources come with a lot of carbs and fats along with them, like beans, black beans, for example. I don't know exactly off the top of my head, but in order to get 40 grams of protein from black beans, you're eating like hundreds and hundreds of calories because beans just come with a lot of carbs with them as well. So that makes it a little bit tougher to balance and that's where things like those protein powders really do help. Yeah, so 660 calories of black beans gives you 44 grams of protein. That's 500 grams of beans. 
Not to mention the fact that you'd just be like blowing ass all day long if you were to eat a pound of beans. And on top of that, I will say that I have a client, actually a couple of clients, who eat almost entirely plant-based diets, who've made great progress, losing 20, 25 plus pounds over the course of the last six months or so. And they seem to be doing great. So I'm sure you can figure it out. This is a great question. Southern Bell Pepper asks, what would be your advice to someone who's skinny fat? I'm 28, six feet tall, and 80 kilos. I have skinny arms and legs with mostly weight around my abdominal and middle region. I'm concerned about my organ health, obviously, but I also want to feel more physically capable and healthy as well as attractive again. I'll be starting a master's in science and dietetics soon, very cool, and I understand the nutritional side, but exercise and weight training is not something I'm confident in yet. Any advice with these issues will be great. Smiley face. Thanks for the previous posts and videos you've made. They make more of a difference for guys like myself than you can imagine. Thumbs up emoji. Awesome. Thanks for your question, Southern Bell Pepper, and I'm glad you appreciate the videos, dude. So on the nutritional side of things, you already know this, but a high protein diet, great idea to support muscle growth. And ultimately, muscle growth is the antidote to skinny fat. Nobody can be skinny fat with a lot of muscle, by definition. You're just thick fit if you carry lots of fat and muscle. And even at any given body fat percentage, if you just had another five kilos of muscle on you, you'd look way better, right? So high protein diet, super important. No need necessarily to cut, you can just maintain your weight. And what we need to do is master that weight training and muscle growth side of things. You said it's something you're not confident in or understand yet, I'll tell you right now, that is the number one reason why you are in this skinny fat position. You need to become confident with it. You need to master it. You need to show up consistently in the gym and really learn to train in a way that stimulates muscle growth. That means training hard with basic exercises, relatively close to failure, and getting stronger at them over time, week after week, month after month, for a period of months and years, without big gaps in between. So if you can just go get your gym membership now, and from whenever we release this video, you know, October 2024 until October 2025, if you can just not miss a bunch of workouts, maybe you go on vacation once or twice, that's fine, and you're just in there every time focused on building muscle, you will not be skinny fat anymore. A year of serious, dedicated training for muscle growth is basically all it takes to cure skinny fat for basically anybody. That's what I'd do if I were you. I released a whole video on this and how I fixed it for myself if you want to watch it a little bit more in detail and see a little bit more about what I mean with that stuff. But yeah, a year of training. <laughs> as basic as it sounds, that's what I'd do. Okay, Jay has a question, so we're going to you. How does it make you feel to see so many comments about and DMs about your body hair? Okay, if you couldn't hear that, Jay asks, how does it make you feel to see so many comments and DMs about your body hair? Ah, uh, man, I mean, I'm sure some of you guys watching the channel see this in the comment section. My DMs too, it's wild out here, guys. People talking about my armpits, how I don't shave my chest and they like it and whatever. I, I'm just curious, like, why so many people care? Like, a lot of people, it's not even like a sexual thing. They're just like, I respect that you don't shave your chest like so many other fitness guys do. Man, who cares? Like, people are going to shave their chest or not. Like, it's just whatever. Um, that, that's my honest thing is like, why do people care in the first place? And the other one, like all the sexual stuff, like, hey, do you sell OnlyFans stuff? Blah, blah, blah. So sexy, your armpits, yada. I'm like, just fuck. God damn it. I'm trying to be like out here educating people and teaching about training and nutrition. All people can do is just stare at my goddamn armpits. Like it's some kind of warm fucking place for them to put something that shouldn't go there. Uh, it's beyond me. I don't know. Okay, next question. Atheist Nihilist asks, what are some of the physiques which have inspired and motivated you during your journey? Could be friends or father, uncles or bodybuilders or clients or actors or other influencers, etc." Yeah, this is a really good question. I will say that um, while I do get inspiration from people with their physiques, one thing that I have seen a lot of is people asking like, what is your goal physique? And people will say like, oh, I want to look like Thor. Or I want to look like this or whatever. And I think that's kind of misguided because you're never going to look like somebody else. You're only ever just going to look like a more jacked version of yourself. So I'd say that a lot of the physiques I kind of aspire to look like are ones that I think my body type could eventually end up looking like. But outside of that, like I, I purely just see some physiques and I'm like, that's fucking crazy that they achieved that. And that's inspiring to me, just knowing like the work and effort that went into that and seeing what's cap what's possible. That's really inspiring. Obviously, I know I'll never be a pro bodybuilder, but a lot of pro bodybuilders have very inspiring physiques to me. Alberto Nunez, Brian DaCosta are two of them. Doug Miller, Joshua Kenyon, Frederick Ibsen, all crazy physiques. 
super inspiring. Adam Pow as well. People who I'm like, look, I'm probably never going to look like this. I'm probably never going to look like Jeff Alberts, but who cares? It's really cool to see what's possible. Some other people of note, I will say like more in the YouTube and fitness space, uh, Axel Hersoviak, uh, Jeffrey Verity Schofield, just enormous, super jacked. Axel's got like the fucking svelte, the symmetry is super dialed. That's awesome. Uh, Alex Leonidas, Alpha, Alpha Destiny, awesome physique. Um, who else? Paris Butler, Bald Omni Man, just has like mega melon chest, stupidly deep back, fucking crazy shreds. Um, who else? I think there's some other people that I'm probably forgetting. Oh man, yeah, there's some guys on the enhanced side too who have crazy physiques. Jared Feather has just like an insane, insane physique. Like, I, I don't hang out with a lot of pro bodybuilders or a lot of people who take steroids, but um, I went to this event in Melbourne and Jared Feather was there. I think he's like 5'11 or six feet tall and like 240, 230 pounds. Like shredded, below 10% body fat, insane. And like, we're all training together in this big gym, uh, Eugene Teo's gym. There was like 30 people in the room. And at the end of the workout, Jared Feather took his shirt off and was just flexing in the mirror. And people just started gravitating around him and just kind of formed a circle like there was something going on. And it was just like a different level of, it, it was inhuman. Like it was something I just never seen. It was crazy just to see what's possible. Okay, last thing I'll say about this, the biggest inspiration I take from all these people is not like, oh wow, look at their body and look what's possible and like, look what I could do if I stuck with this because I know I'm probably never gonna look like them. But what I do see is their training. When I see people training, that fires me up to see the effort they give into every set, how consistent they are with their diet and how much they really do pour into everything, how meticulous they are. To me, that's like the biggest inspiration. Just being like, wow, look at this person's work ethic and look at their dedication. That fires me up. Apple Juice City asks, what advice would you have for a large six foot four, 240 pound man trying to get back down to 220 while maintaining a healthy amount of lean muscle? Cool, great question. First thing I'll say, just because I'm a nitpicky asshole, there is no such thing as anything but lean muscle. All muscle is lean tissue, as human beings store very little amount or I think almost no intramuscular fat. <sighs> Honest to God, man, simple stuff. Basic fat loss diet over the next, what, Eight weeks for you maybe to lose 20 pounds? No, maybe more like 12 week fat loss diet. So we're not losing fat too quickly, something like a pound, pound and a half a week. Uh, while training hard for muscle growth in the gym and eating a high protein diet, managing your stress and getting plenty of sleep, risk of muscle loss is very low in this situation. So yeah, just do the basics. What everyone talks about, it works really well. Ron John Biffy asks, hello, hello. Something around how you would avoid loose skin when losing significant weight, for instance, 50 pounds multiple times like I've done, have been actively looking for advice on this for a while and I haven't found it. I think you're un uniquely qualified to discuss this particular topic. Thanks. Cool, let's talk about loose skin. The first thing is I will make a big disclaimer here saying I'm not an expert in skin stuff. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna give you medical advice here, but there are a couple of things to keep in mind. One, how elastic your skin is and how quickly and completely it returns to normal looking skin after big weight loss is largely out of your control. As far as I know, a lot of it is genetic and it's also based on your age too. I think skin just kind of loses its elastin, I think it's called, as you get older. So that's a big part of it. Two, I have read some stuff saying that losing fat faster can lead to more loose skin. So if you lose weight extremely quickly, you can see more loose skin. I'm not sure 100% that that's true, but I'm pretty sure. And um, also, loose skin, I think, does tend to take more time than fat losses do. So like you might lose a ton of weight really quickly and you might have some loose skin and then at the end, it might still take some time and eventually restore itself. So give it some time, don't lose weight too quickly understand that it's largely out of your control. And then I think surgery is also an option in there too for people who can afford it or wanna go into that. There is the option to get some surgery to clean up loose skin. And yeah, I, I'm actually not uniquely qualified to discuss this because I just never really had that much loose skin. I think I maybe had a little bit when I was getting really lean, just kind of right around my belly, but nothing really too crazy. Maybe I'm just lucky with my skin or, or something else. Iboosh3080 asks, do you pack food when you travel for business? 
Any advice for eating healthy while traveling? Yeah, I do pack food when I travel. It saves me money and it helps me keep on track with my goals. So what I do is I have a shaker cup that I put two scoops of whey protein into and then it actually has like a bottom compartment where you can put another two scoops of whey protein and just store it for later separately. And there's 100 grams of protein right there that, you know, that's easily just two separate lunches or makes lunches high protein. So that helps a ton. Protein bars are also awesome. I really like the pure protein bars. They're 200 calories and 20 grams of protein. And beef jerky is another great option for protein. The reason why I'm recommending all protein sources to pack is because carbs are so much easier to find when you're on the go. It's really easy to pick up a piece of fruit or, you know, some bread or rolls or a treat or something like that and just add it to a protein source that you have with you while you're traveling to make a more complete meal. So bring some protein with you and make it easy. The second thing is any advice for eating healthy while traveling? 100%. I think if you can get a hotel with a mini fridge, that's a big deal, especially for longer stays. Being able to just get, you know, some pre-made Greek salad from the grocery store in a big container in the fridge and being able to get a rotisserie chicken and some pita breads or something like that, just so you can store healthy food and make it easier for yourself, the better. On top of that, I think if you have big social events or commitments in the evening where you know you're going to be out hammering a bunch of drinks and food with your coworkers, it might be better to stay a little bit lighter on the calories for the earlier part of the day so you can create a little bit of a buffer for the evening. Hope that helps. Make it so 52 asks, here's my question. How is it possible that you're such a cool dude? For real, thanks for all you do and your great advice. I've struggled with my weight for about 20 plus years. I've lost near 50 pounds twice in my life. Hey, what's up, dude? I'm 36 and I'm in the best shape of my life. So awesome to hear that. Um, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Like doing stuff like this is so awesome. Seeing comments like this where it's just people getting helped for free uh, for my stuff. And yeah, being able to connect with people is sweet. I'm that guy asks, what was the biggest game changer for you to follow good eating habits and stave off food cravings? So I still get food cravings for sure. I still eat junk food and I still want junk food pretty regularly. I would say it's not like every day has to revolve around junk food, but I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I've eaten an ice cream or an ice cream cone every day, probably for the last, what, 30 days at least. Uh, so food cravings are still real. I just like to keep stuff in moderation. And I think the other thing is since I'm eating so much good whole minimally processed stuff, like when I had that apple right before this and, you know, I have lots of fruit and veggies and lean protein, it fills you up and you just want junk food less. On top of that, it's just so much better on my digestion. I just can't handle eating a ton of junk food. It just blows up my guts. I just get gassy. I, you know, it's, it doesn't feel great for me, honestly, and I don't feel great in my workouts. And I just get really hungry too. Like I find I have a pretty ripping appetite. And uh, if I eat mostly junk food, I'll just get super hungry. And I hate feeling that way. So that really helps me to just want to eat healthy. On top of that, good eating habits also covers like eating a high protein diet for me. And I know that I want to get as jacked as possible. I want to make as much progress as possible. And eating is just so easy to tick that box. Training's fucking hard. If I'm putting in all this effort sleeping, going to the gym, staying active and all that stuff, I might as well just put some goddamn chicken in my mouth a few times a day. It's not the end of the world if that means the difference between me getting okay results and great results. So I just kind of tie it to my goals. Jim Imperial or J Imperial says, great points. I have a question for your Q&A. How do you handle feeling and looking flat when you're dieting down? Mm, good question. It can be tough mentally, especially when you look smaller in a shirt and question whether you even lift. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've been there before, man. Um, you can even look back, uh, for people who are newer to the channel, look back at my videos from the last, like, about six or eight months ago, and you'll see me literally swimming around in a small shirt. And the answer for that, I think, is a couplefold. Firstly, come to terms with the fact that if you don't have a lot of muscle, or even if you do, you're just going to look smaller when you diet because you literally are smaller. So that's a big thing, is coming to terms with how do I want to look and feel? And how does that match up with my, my goal weight and, and goal body fat percentage? If you really don't like looking and feeling small, just don't get that lean. Don't get that small. Rock a higher body fat percentage and put more muscle on. On top of that, you can adjust your wardrobe. I was literally wearing all my medium and large shirts that I was wearing when I was powerlifting, when I started losing weight. And my girlfriend, Jay, bought me some small shirts because she's like, you just look 
tragic in these shirts. She bought me some smalls and I could feel like I was filling them out again. I filled up the sleeves. I could actually see my chest again. So I think kind of updating your wardrobe based on your weight loss can help a lot too. Another good idea is to just focus on kind of where you're headed. It might be tough along the way and you're probably gonna look worse in the middle of it, but just know that you're plugging in for an end goal. And even if dieting literally makes you look worse in the interim, you're getting leaner so that you can get down to a place where you look better. Maybe that's just being shredded and super lean down there, or maybe that's getting lean enough so you can bulk for a long time and put some more muscle on. So it's all kind of a means to an end. And when you start eating more food at the end of your diet, you're also gonna fill up and just look so much fuller and better too. The other thing you can do is if you're a hairy bastard like me, <clears throat> when you're fat or softer, I'm not gonna say fat, when you're softer and you have a higher body fat percentage, letting the body hair grow out a little bit is a bit of a pattern interrupt and uh, it makes you actually look a little bit leaner. It covers up some of that softness. But when you're really lean, taking off some of that body hair can reveal a lot more definition. So you can actually see the abs, you can see a lot more striations and things like that. Twin3892 asks, what is too long for a diet? The answer is it's gonna be completely different for everybody, but here are some guidelines to follow. If you are pushing for so long that you're finding it hard to even continue sticking to the diet and adhering to the plan, well, you're probably done, right? You've been dieting for so long, you're so hungry or just psychologically burnt out on the dieting process. It may be time to just take a little bit of a break or call it quits entirely on the diet and stop it. That could be 12 weeks for some people, that could be 16 weeks for some people. Man, I think if you have lots of fat to lose, that might be 26 or maybe a year of flat out dieting it might take for you to just be like, yeah, it's over. But I would say as long as you are productively losing fat, you're feeling okay, you're still able to train properly, sleep is still good, and you're moving in the right direction, dude, just, just keep dieting. I would have said before that there's a hard and fast rule of 12 weeks or 16 weeks, but now I've kind of changed my mind on it, and I think as long as things are moving in the right direction, you're good. Video Game Room 32 says, great video, thanks. I'm trying to go from 20% to 10% body fat. I walk 12 to 14,000 steps in a day. Holy shit, that's a lot. I've lost 16 pounds in eight weeks, fucking dope. And I've lost three inches from my belly fat. Is it possible to gain weight and not add the belly fat back on? I replied. I said, my dude, you're crushing this. Why would you want to gain weight later? Video game room 32, just so I can get some more context. He says, because my arms look skinny, I want thicker and more muscular arms. The answer is to the question, which is basically, can I gain weight and gain muscle without gaining fat? The answer is yes. You could just maintain your weight and try and build muscle at any given weight or main gain or gain tain or whatever, but it's probably not gonna be the most productive way to build muscle. But if you're really, really against gaining any fat, then I guess that's your best option. However, you could go on a slow gain, weight gain phase or a slow or lean bulk and gain minimal fat while gaining as much muscle as you can and just be okay with gaining a little bit of fat back in knowing that you can lose that fat so quickly. You lost eight, 16 pounds in eight weeks and three inches off your belly in that you know, eight week period. If you were to gain that 16 pounds over the course of the next eight months on a nice lean bulk, where you're really putting on as much muscle and strength and size as you can, then maybe you gain a, a little bit of that as fat and you could just diet it off at the end, no problem. So gaining weight should take a very long time and you shouldn't gain a ton of fat along the way. I think you'll do great with it. I can't read the channel name on this one because I messed up the screenshot, but this person says, hi, I'm new to your channel. Good informative videos. Which fitness band are you wearing here? So this, I forget the exact name and brand, but what I'll do is I'll just put an Amazon link in the thing. You can go check it out if you want. It was like 19 bucks. Um, honestly, it's not the best one ever. The app is a little bit glitchy. I'm not sure I love it. I might shop around for a new one. But the thing I like about it is it just has this tap uh, on the watch face and I can just see my steps throughout the day. I'll probably look for a different one, one that maybe looks a little bit nicer and actually the app functions well. But I think this is just some like knockoff China Fitbit thing. <laughs> this is actually a kid's one. I forgot about that. That's why it's so cheap. And I'm literally on like one of the last uh, available band spots because it's designed for six-year-olds or whatever. Senior Conrad, might just be SR Conrad, asks, question for your 20K video. At 15% body fat, should my stomach be flat naturally? I can flex it and make it flat unscientifically. I think I'm at about 18% now. I just want to know what's realistic. I'm lean everywhere else. Honestly, man, this is going to be totally different for everybody. And I think having like that little pooch of belly fat right at the bottom is basically gonna be there for a very long time for just about everybody. If you look back in my videos and there's a video of me measuring my waist, oh, maybe we haven't published this yet, where I'm like 
literally 10% body fat or maybe just below. I've got veins running across my abs when I flex. And I still have, when I'm relaxed, a little bit of belly fat right at the bottom that just is there. So it's not perfectly flat all the way, but from my rib cage to just below my belly button is very flat. Um, but yeah, in order to diet so that you're relaxed and it's like completely flat, that's either gonna be very, very lean for most people, or you're just genetically gifted to have that perfectly flat thing. So maybe, maybe not. I would say the only thing you can do is just continue pushing on the fat loss side of things and see where you get to. Um, with a few more pounds of fat loss. Ryan McCurleyan asks, for the q and I've just started to post on YouTube with the aim of helping people lose weight. Do you have any advice for building a fitness coaching business? Guys, I'm not gonna pretend to be a business coaching guru here uh, or pretend like I have all the answers, but Ryan, I will tell you this, running a successful business ultimately comes down to attracting new customers and delivering a great product uh, on the back end. So with a coaching business, that means helping people solve their problems on the front end, giving them a reason to pay attention to you, um, you know, providing them free, basically coaching in advance via your videos and helping people in the DMs and over email and stuff like that. And then on the back end, uh, delivering a great customer experience. Be responsive to people. Take their needs into account when you're building their programs. Listen to them when they tell you that things are working or aren't working for them. Just get them great freaking results, man. Because if you help people get fucking lean, you help them get more out of their training, you help them get hurt less, they're going to want to refer you to their friends and they're going to want to keep coming back for more. So, Make sure you're attracting plenty of new leads and customers and clients, and then you're doing a great job with the people on the back end. That's ultimately it. Without getting too into the nitty gritty, I know you probably want more than that. Um, so just email me and maybe I can help you some more. Aggie Longhorn asks, how do you know what your body fat percentage is? The answer to tell you the truth, Aggie, is I don't. I don't know what my body fat percentage is. Even with the most advanced tools that I could have access to, it's all still kind of an error of margin. And basically, I just estimate by eye. And honestly, I don't really do that that often because it doesn't really help me make decisions about things. Like, I don't really make that many decisions on my day-to-day -day life or even on like a monthly basis about my body fat percentage. I just say, is this leaner than I want to be? Is this softer than I want to be? And I kind of make my decisions accordingly. Although I will say that a visual analog scale, just like a visual scale of different pictures of body fat percentages can be useful, at least to just kind of give you a bearing of of what roughly different body fat percentages look at, uh, look like. So if you wanna check that out, uh, I have a bunch of videos where I talk about body fat percentage. If you click on any of them, I'll show you a visual scale and you can see more specifically kind of where you might be. Daniel Navarrete, 8571 asks, did you ever lose your lower back fat or love handles completely? Looks like that's what you struggle with the most and so do I. And I'd really like to know if these will go away once I'm lean. Adam, it, I look like I'm around 15% body fat right now with some visible abs, but my love handles are still huge and it's kind of frustrating. I'm around 6'1 and 205 pounds for reference. I'm planning to go as low as 190. In order, did I ever lose my lower back fat or love handles completely? The answer is no. Uh, there was always a little bit of fat still hanging around there. But the reality is, folks, a little bit of fat is just crazy to think about. I mean, I could pinch the fat on my lower abs, but there was really not all that much there. I could, you know, pinch the fat there and I could still see veins coming like from my quad up my pelvis into my abs and I can still pinch a little bit of fat there. Like it's freaky how lean you can get and still find a little bit of fat. And that's because when there's less on you, it becomes increasingly visible where it is and it's always going to hang right around that midsection for most men. So no, I didn't ever lose them completely but I also don't struggle with it because I realize that's just part of life. Um, your 15% body fat or so, it's frustrating that they're big. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of sucks. Y your only options are, one, go watch my video about love handles where I talk more in detail about what I'd do if I were you. Two, build a lot of muscle so that it doesn't really matter if you have a little bit of love handles because you have big, gnarly gorilla chest, big jack shoulders, arms, legs, and back. And also, you can just get leaner. You said you were going to go to 190, get there, see how it feels. And you'll probably realize that getting leaner and really trying to completely get rid of that lower back fat just might not be worth it for you. Muscle Fit Machine 7211 asks, bro, just one question. Can we lose body fat and build muscle at maintenance calories or is a slight deficit until your desired body fat percentage optimum? Which is the better route? Also, how much fat loss and lean muscle build can one expect at maintenance for let's say two to three months? Uh, okay, you definitely... Eating at maintenance, you will build more muscle than if you're eating in a deficit. Putting your body into a calorie deficit just generally puts a damper on how much muscle you can build because muscle not only requires 
actual physical resources to be built out of, but it's also potentially a metabolically expensive process. So even just building that muscle, let alone the resources, takes energy, and your body's less likely to have the impetus to do that when there's less resources laying around. So maintenance would be better for building muscle, but if you want to lose fat, then your only option is to lose fat. Also, how much fat loss and lean muscle would you expect to build at maintenance with two to three months? I honestly have no idea. That depends on a lot of different factors. How well are you training? How well are you sleeping? How well are you managing your stress? Uh, how long have you been training for? How consistent are you? All those things will come into play. But the thing is, you don't need to know. Like, you really don't need these answers. Just go and do your absolute best and you'll get the absolute best results that you could, right? I think a lot of people get too caught up in like trying to figure out where they're going to be or how long it's going to take. When in reality, they just need to get started. Again, thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate every fucking one of you 20,000 cool people. And I'm probably going to do another one of these at 25,000 subscribers if this goes well. It gets a bunch of, you know, views and everything like that. So if you want to leave more questions for the next one below this, feel free to. And if you don't want to leave a question, just upvote the ones that you want to see answered. For those of you who don't know, it's basically just my girlfriend and I running this YouTube channel. We do everything she's behind the camera. And, you know, I write the videos and everything. So it's great to have so much awesome support. In any case, be sure to leave a comment below with questions for the 25,000 Q&A and thumbs up the ones that you want to see me answer. Thanks so much for watching as always, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.